Hello, Grant. Hi, nice to see you. Good afternoon. Uh -huh. Good morning <laughs> good from morning. my side. <laughs> yes. Good afternoon from my high side. First of all, I wanted to and thank you, of course, and I wanna my apologize. My uh, apologize. I am really um, crazy <laughs> interviewer. <laughs> I forgot, I completely forgot. To, it's okay. I completely forgot to to give you opportunity to introduce yourself. Let's our part fear. Please tell us about yourself <laughs> to our uh, viewers. Well, sure. Well, my name is Grant, and I've been in the field of education and teaching for 15 years now, over 15 years. Um, I start, I practically worked in after school programs, uh, after school, preschool, uh, daycare programs in the States. And then about six years ago, well, I'm gonna hit six years here in July, I've been teaching English here in China. So practically all my life, I've been just teaching children and uh, among the range of, uh, you know, as, as young as two years old, to as old as maybe fifth grade, sixth grade. So, um, nothing really exciting about me. Um, I have two younger brothers, um, you know, and, um, but <laughs> it's really about what you want to ask me and I can answer, but I, I find my <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> introduction rather boring. <laughs> Thank you. And, but I'm a uh, simple guy. I live life to the fullest. It's kind of my motto, my, mo my motto is to live life to the fullest. Don't let anything get in your way. Keep striving don't give up mm -hmm. don't let people yeah. tell you no when you know you can do it and uh other point i wanted to congrats you mm, yesterday your your birthday and uh our best oh, wishes you. from all web talkers <laughs> be healthy you, and you. wealthy <laughs> enjoy your way definitely yeah definitely. thanks so much yeah definitely uh, yeah, it was a for, fun. It was a for fun being, night. For being our part and um, giving us opportunity for um, uh, practice English, and so your name is Grant. Um, actually, Correct. your name is associated with uh, the book of um, written by Jules, Jules Verne. Um, do you know? about the children of Captain Grant. Uh, have you heard uh, about it? I, I don't know that story. Uh -huh. uh, really? I, I do know Grant. I know I don't. I don't. I do know that Grant is like a, a Greek word for great or something like that. Uh, mm. Something like that. Uh -huh. yeah. But uh, this book uh, goes name... not so from ancients. It's just uh, it's uh, quite modern if we Mm, relate to if we compare this time <laughs> grant and so grant is mm, yeah. the captain uh, this book tells us about uh, the adventures adventures uh, that uh, children of uh, grant uh, go through the world and uh, looking for his father and so it is um, a really interesting beautiful story but what about you? Do you like adventures? Oh, definitely. I wouldn't be in China if it wasn't up for an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, all, I'm always up. I mean, it's scary. You know, it took a year for my friend to convince me to come to China. And my friend um, who I've known since um, elementary school, oh, middle school, sorry, middle school, um, he came to China two years before I came to China. Mm -hmm. And I was struggling, like I couldn't, I didn't like the way work was here in the, here in the States. You know, it was a bunch, just a bunch of BS, <clears throat> you know, bologna and sausage. And um, you can maybe edit that part out. <laughs> but, um, but no, um, but no, it was just, it was just really difficult in the States. I mean, I'm, I was pinching pennies to do what I loved. And then when my friend, uh, introduced the idea of working in China. He had been there maybe just a little over a year. Um, 
over a year maybe or under a year and i'm like ah, i don't know it's such a different part of the world there's some so many different things mm-hmm. and i don't know if i could do it blah, blah 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 and he's like okay come on and it took a while but i i, I secured a job and i'll keep the story short so short and su- uh, short and sweet um i secured a job with an agency and i came to chung chung the agency could not secure me a job and the schools were looking for other people other teachers so I'm thinking to myself, great, you know. And then my friend had some parents who wanted a private tutor. They wanted me instantly. So that kind of took the weight off my shoulder of like thinking, okay, it's not me, it's them. Because after having that one group of students, I got another group. Mm-hmm. And I got another group. So I had ended up getting three groups of students. And the time, the agency said I was no good. Mm-hmm. So to hear the agency tell me I was no good kind of put me down. But at the same time, realizing that those groups of parents wanted me to teach their children, mm-hmm. gave me that they don't know what they're talking about, you know. And I've had some some slight hiccups, you know, in my time in China, but... I, I, met, I landed a study job at the kindergarten I'm at now, which will almost be, which will be five years in October. And I, I've been sad. I've been somewhat satisfied. I love my kids. I love the parents. I love who I'm working with. You know, mm-hmm. it's been a great experience. You know, what I've learned about China is that almost all the schools are the same. So I've kind of found my, my rhythm here in china so i'm i'm secure in where i'm working now but i'm always open up to new opportunities i know everybody in vietnam wants me to go work in vietnam <laughs> so um that's very inspiring. on my bucket list mm-hmm. uh, even yeah. <laughs> even you are sitting in the um, your room your background <laughs> that you have uh, yeah <laughs> tell us <laughs> It's kind of adventure. <laughs> I thought this would make it peaceful and fusa. <laughs> mm-hmm. So is it like uh, these little back. is it Chinese um, background, uh, Chinese landscape? No, no. Um, what I did is I go to YouTube and I use a tool uh. to download the royalty-free backgrounds, mm-hmm. and as long as they're under like five minutes and under a certain megabytes it can it can be computed in the zoom application mm-hmm. it's a whole that's a whole different topic it's a whole different conversation <laughs> but short and sweet they have a uh, an add-on on zoom like i think you tried it but your computer wasn't um powerful enough to do it. i think you had tried it before mm-hmm. uh, did you, you see there's a video one and then there's a picture one but um they just now add the video one this is actually really awesome i really wish there was actually a program outside of zoom that did this because when i do my stories Mm -hmm. i have to kind of be creative so when i do my stories i use the zoom video and then i use a software to record my screen Mm -hmm. so i can record with zoom but i don't like where the video Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it just stays in the corner but i'm very particular with my videos so i like to actually be in the book you know yeah yeah. i like to be in the book i i I remember your the videos are really interesting and so and uh, a company company with your voice and it's great uh have you gotten a chance to look at the grammar videos? Those are really, um, I don't know what you've thought of those, but I have just recently started to add these grammar videos from a book that um, ah. I'm going off. I'm, I'm not being that creative with them. I'm kind of a little boring with them. I will look for. Because they're, um, they're, on, they're on that channel. They're on the, um, the channel. Um, I was going to say, I can show you the book I'm using. It's DK English. Uh, uh, I can't show you my screen, but I'll show I'll show it to you later. 
But anyway, it's a book that's what I'm kind of using as a guideline. So I'm talking about the past tense, the simple past, the simple present, the continuous, the um, when you're using um, would and um, there's another one. I forget my, my notes. So do you practice? Uh, do you practice it with your students? Um, I haven't used those videos with the children. Um, I'm going to stick to the stories. Uh, I don't know if, if the lessons would be too simple. Um, I think they'd be too, for example, even at your level, I think that this, the lessons would be very simple. Like, you know what the past simple is, right? Mm -hmm. the, the past simple, the continuous. Mm -hmm. You're aware of those basics. So it'd be kind of, even for your level, you're high enough to not really have to like, okay, yes, I know, I went to the store, not I go to the store, you know, that kind of thing. So those lessons are kind of simple, yeah. but also a good review. It would be good to watch it and, uh, and try to practice because uh, actually yeah. for me is difficult to use necessary words at the necessary time. <laughs> necessary yeah, I, I think some of the videos would be good for you um but some are very simple like um, it's like the first lesson is very simple it's the past simple right mm -hmm. it's basically an event that has already taken place and has stopped like mm -hmm. i went to the store yesterday very simple not i go to the store yesterday right like you know that kind of those kind of rules i i'm aware I, i'm at least i think you do uh, but those are, I, mean, I think, yeah, you have a look at them. Um, they're on that channel. I hope you're on the right channel. I think you are. Uh, because you should have seen the lessons on there because I've been posting them um, lately. Um, I had two channels and it's a little difficult because yeah, yeah. one can go live and one can't go live. And the one that can go live uh isn't I don't have the stories on there and eventually I'm gonna um, move the live videos to my main channel and just call them like archive but um, videos like name them live video this date this date you know uh, live class this date live class that date and eventually when I move them over I'm gonna migrate them over yeah to it's the kind of dynamic channel. yeah mm-hmm yeah dynamic action and so uh, really interesting <laughs> what about uh, yeah uh, take, uh, let's go back a little to <laughs> adventures sure, sure. about adventures uh, if you were to go on a dangerous adventures uh, who would you like to take with mm -hmm. Um, if I were to go on an adventure, yeah. I'd like to take my immediate family, like my brothers and uh, my brother's family, because um, of my nephew, my niece, my dad, my stepmom. I'd like to all of us to go just like, you know, you know flip the globe around and point and go. Um, I went to Italy, actually, um, 10, about 10 years ago, I think. It's hard to remember now. Maybe a little over 10 years ago, I went to Italy and it was a grand experience. It was a really great experience to go to uh, Italy. It was really exciting. Did you go so. uh, with, your co with your company, family? Mm -hmm. um, no, I haven't really. My dad has gone to China. I flew him out and I also flew my um. Uh, I mean brother to Italy. To I mean to Italy. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It was myself and a friend of uh -huh. mine. It was uh -huh. myself and a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, um, it, it uh, was. I want to show you. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Did you buy a tour or you go um, no. by yourself, but you no. ticket, it, taking ticket and. No, it wasn't, but it wasn't with the tour. It was definitely, with, it was with a friend. And it, it was just her and I that we went to yeah. um, to Italy. So, uh, but it was a really great experience. Wonderful. And, uh, it was a, there was a lot of places that we saw and yeah. 
which so cities it was really exciting which cities to, um, do you visit it maybe venicia venicia um and um uh, oh my gosh i'm blanking it was venice venicia and one other place we went to i can't remember what the name of the city is though we did this really great hike called the walk of tuscany Mm-hmm. And basically, it's a it's a it's a hike, right? You go up into this this area, and it was a lunch area, and we ended up having like an Italian um, lunch with like a little like red wine. Now, I'm not a wine person. I tried it, still don't like wine, <laughs> but um, it was just a really beautiful view. I have pictures and photos and stuff like that. I'll have to share maybe sometime in on Web Talk. I'll I'll dig those up and share them. But so, uh, tennis but it, go. A, uh, uh, they will know any cell phone, and you. And, uh, they were popular. I don't uh, think I have photo cameras, and uh, isn't it? It was. Well, oh, yeah, well, I had a I had a camera I used. Uh, it was actually a digital camera, mm-hmm. not a phone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think everybody uses a phone now. I think digital cameras are yeah, yeah. becoming obsolete <laughs> now. Mm-hmm. Right. I but think they still want to sell them. <laughs> cameras is like kind of old-fashioned <laughs> now. But I think, I'm not 100% sure. I still think people can do more with a camera. But Again, the, I'm, not a photogra- if, if, uh, I'm not a photographer. If expert. they are photography, professional photographers, I think. Yeah, yeah, then cameras work very well. But, because but casual people uh, use, use, <laughs> use cell yeah, phones. <laughs> a phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's... I, this is the, the 11. I got the new 11 phone. Mm-hmm. The, wow, the, 11. Uh, 11. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I've had the SE forever. I've had the SE for, I have had it for like three years. And I decided to just go all out and I got it on launch. Let me get it on launch. Yeah, I got the phone on at launch. So this is like what a year old now? I, no, back in October. No, October it came out. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's still less than a year because the iPhone 11 came out I think in October or September, something like that. But, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, what about um, very often dogs participate in adventures? Uh, do you have dogs? I think I have dog. Uh, I'm Not, sorry, come again? Do you have oh, a dog? Dog. Do, dog. Um, yeah. No, I don't have a dog in China. No, I grew up with them though. And uh-huh. oh, we take our dog hiking all the time. We take our dog hiking all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad and I, we went up to, um, to, I think it was Lady Lake up in the mountains in California. And I remember mm-hmm. the water being so cold. There are these, um, there are these uh, ladies across the lake. My dad are like, oh, we should swim across and say hello. So I, I get, I, and we already knew the water was cold. Like, you know, what? I'm gonna just do it. I'm gonna just gonna do it. We had a dog with us at the time, and I dive in, and all of a sudden I hear this splash. I go, my dad behind me? It's my dog. He jumps in the lake. Just. Jumps in. <laughs> we didn't even ask him to jump in. He just jumps in the lake and dives in. He's paddling little, paddle little legs. And he, he was such an adventurous dog. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and I, he lived a great life. He lived a good 15 years, I think, or more maybe. Um, we, uh, there's a story I call the Malibu story. Because Malibu is a very great city in LA it's like a very nice city rich area Mm -hmm. and uh, we let our dog have an open door policy so I'll explain that so if he had to go outside to go do his business we'd have the door open he'd go on in and uh, we'd have the door cracked open so he can just come back in he'd come back in we tell him to actually close the door he actually closed the door behind him he'd go Tebow close the door and close the door. <laughs> One of these nights, mm-hmm. he That's went smart. out and he was doing, yeah, he very, oh man, he's just, I, I can't think of a smarter dog. Like, mm-hmm. my friends were really impressed. Like, we'd be watching the movie. It's like, hey, Grant, are you going to close the door? I was like, oh, no, no. Tebow, 
Tibo, close the door. <laughs> they look at me going, no way. <laughs> so, Wonderful. I've ne- yeah. uh, seen uh, such smart dogs, really. Yes. Yeah. So he- here's the Malibu story. So the Malibu story is as follows. So he, as we said, we had an open door policy. He'd go out. So he went a little bit too far. Um, good Samaritans picked him up because he was like crying across the street and he picked them on up. And now because if the pound catches him, it's like a hundred dollars each time. You got to get him out of a pound. I don't know what that is in, um, in Russian currency. It's a hundred, two hundred dollars just to get him out of the pound. And so they didn't want that to happen. So there's a gal who um, would actually kind of be like uh, the Robin Hood of dogs. Mm-hmm. Basically, she would be the one to connect with us so the pound wasn't the one getting the dog. So we couldn't find him for the longest time. And luckily enough, um, I, had her, I had her number because she had helped us before. And I happened to have my, old, my phone, my contacts. I said, wait, wait there is a gal. And so I called her and she said there was a couple that picked up a dog that matched our description that had a house in our city and they also lived in Malibu. We called them up and we said, hey, we think you have our dog. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so, because they, want, they were going to actually make a trip back out. It's like, well, hey, so we know that's your dog. Can you kind of describe him? And we're like describing him. And I said, dad, 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 just, just tell them to tell him to close the door. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm like in high, I'm a, you know, so he's like, yeah, yeah. Just say, Tivo, close the door. And we hear the door shut in the background, in the, in, in, in the, in the foreground when they're on the phone. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's our dog. So, but it's so great. And oh yeah. So we would be checking up on him and we said, oh yeah. So where's Tebow? Mm-hmm. And they said, ah, he's out in the backyard swimming with the dogs. Mm-hmm. And we're thinking, Whoa. you little monster, we're <laughs> worried. We are worrying our butts off. We're worrying our butts off, and you're out swimming with the dogs. They have this big pool for their dogs, right? Mm-hmm. They're all out there swimming. And because we're, when we're talking about, that's right, before they actually did the test, we're like, oh, yeah, so where is Tebo? Oh, he's out swimming in the back with the dogs. Little. You know, and he, he comes on. Oh, it was so funny. Was so yeah, funny. really so funny, funny. Really funny. We had, a, mm-hmm. we had a cat, right? So we had uh-huh. a cat. And they're best buddies. The cat, dog, love each other. Wow. It was a week before our dog came back. It was a week before mm-hmm. our dog came back. And when he came back and he'd go up to, to our cat, the cat was furious with him. <laughs> Facing him away. It was like he didn't recognize him or maybe she, that the cat sent some other dog on him, mm. but the cat was furious, was wow. ticked off, did mm-hmm. not like the fact. We kind of made a joke like, well, that's what you get when you decide to go off too far and you're gone for a week. The cat mm-hmm. didn't want to speak to the dog for the longest time. Like, didn't want to mess with them. So, yeah. <laughs> so, a, interesting that, story. Mm hmm. Funny, really. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> what about uh, where do you live in China? Which city? Um, I'm in Xinjiang right now. Xinjiang. I'm in Xinjiang. S H E N G Y A N G. Xinjiang. Is it city of? It's in the uh, Liaoning. Mi- millionaires. Millionaires. It's in the Liaoning province. It's um, south, south China, more south than north. I'm really, really bad with geography. This is why I teach English. Mm-hmm. Don't ever teach me to teach geography. Okay. But I believe uh, what about population? Is it big city? Big. It's a big city. Mm-hmm. Um, smaller than Beijing and Shanghai, mm-hmm. but bigger 
than like cities like Harbin and um, Chongqing wow. and yeah. um, Dalian. You know? So it's, uh, a, it's I a know big city. It's a tier two city. China has uh, many, many um, millions of city. Uh, I mean, population uh, over than million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you prefer to live uh, to live in big cities? Yeah. Um, I, I like the smaller town. I think the smaller town uh, is more comfortable than a bigger city. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the States, I live in a relatively smaller city. Mm -hmm. Only a population of like 35,000. Maybe it's more now, but you know, it was like, it's a very small city. It's easy to get around, you know. In my small city, I could drive anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get anywhere in less than ten minutes. You know, yeah. to go wherever you want to go. <laughs> um, but e even our county was very nice. But dri I miss driving. I miss it so much. Like uh, I'll walk. I'll take the bus. Or I'll take a DD to go where I need to go uh, in China. But I do miss driving. So, do you live in a, a high apartment building? I'm on the fourth floor in a wow, fourth a floor. It's so high. Yeah, fourth floor. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen. There's people who live on the twentieth floor, but it's an elevator. You know, a everywhere in China, oh, you're 20. living in an apartment. It's not a oh, house. Fourth, yeah, fourth, it's not a house. It's not fortieth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I no fourth the fourth floor uh, yeah fourth. The fourth. Oh. ah yeah I got it yeah <laughs> yeah fourth floor it's not uh, so high no it's not bad at all <laughs> so yeah so on the fourth floor and um, stairs no elevator which is fine it's a good exercise I get a lot of quarantine weight to lose. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, are you religious? We, we, are you religious? No. Not? Mm -hmm. No. N never, uh, never go to church, <laughs> isn't it? Mm, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll say this about religion. Um, I don't care what you believe, who you believe, how you believe. I believe that everyone is their own person. I choose to live my life to the fullest, do good with people, do good with everything. And that's just my philosophy. Um, I don't feel I need to belong to a church or to a religion or identify who I am. You know, then people might go, oh, then you're an atheist or you're agnostic. And I don't even like to label that like, I'll, I'll kind of joke and say, okay, sure, yeah, I'm an atheist, whatever, what of it. But mm -hmm. even that is a label of a belief. But, so I just choose to not give myself a label, mm -hmm. you know? And, and <laughs> if, I, if people are really pushing, I go, okay, fine. I believe in the flying spaghetti monster. <laughs> Look it up. It's actually some, uh, I won't go into great length of detail, but there's a person at a university uh, the university wanted to push crea uh, creationism as a class, which is a religious, re which is a religious belief. And because in the states there's a separation of church and state, and he's saying, why in the world are you pushing a religious class at a university that should not be taught? And he's like, if you're going to be pushing religion, then you might as well push the flying spaghetti monster. He actually created this as a joke, but as also as a point mm -hmm. to, to point out that if you're going to make someone believe, not make someone believe, but if you're going to teach about one religion, you might as well teach about all religions. So he wrote this whole entire piece about the flying spaghetti monster, how there's ice cream Sundays every Sunday, how there's a chocolate bar every Friday. When you, you know, it's, a, it's a whole, it's funny. So okay, okay, fine, you guys. I believe in the flying spaghetti monster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look Thank it up, Erdi. You. You'll get a good crack out of it. Flying spaghetti monster. <laughs> but right. as far as religion, I don't label myself. I don't. I don't feel the need to label who I am. Mm -hmm. And I, I've had encounters where I do good things. 
And oh yeah, one I would help people out with the car. Oh, you must belong to the Boy Scouts. I go, nope. Oh, you must be a, a, a church goer. Nope. Just because I'm helping somebody or I'm doing something good does not mean I belong to a certain group. You know, it means I was brought up very well in my family. You know, my family was not religious is not religious. We were brought up to be good, wholesome people. And now, mind you, religion is good for people. It gives them a purpose, mm -hmm. it gives them strength, it gives them a direction, it gives them something to believe in, something to look to. And those that's great. I have no beef. I have nothing against it. But what I do have against is when people want to belittle people who choose to not follow what their path is. Uh, actually, I join to your words, to your vision. Even though I'm a religious person, I'm a Buddhist, but uh, I don't like when people uh, say about religious as being proud and so uh, for some people religious uh, it's kind of decoration and uh, they don't mm -hmm. understand um, that it is not the thing that uh, should be taken to forward to um, to say uh, everybody people um, that uh, we should be uh, Buddhist uh, or Christian or Muslim, etc. It's that's exactly. up to them. Yeah. Yeah, and there's so many religions out there. I mean, there's thousands of them. And then if you're a Christian, then there's like a hundred demonstrations of Christianity. For, forgive me if I'm wrong. I'm I, forgive me if I'm wrong. I might be exaggerating. So because I don't, I don't, I don't want to be quoted like. You know, and I think in Catholicism, there's a lot of denominations of Catholicism. There's a lot of denominations of Buddhism, right? There's certain categories. And if I'm not mistaken, forgive me if I'm mistaken. But for every religion, there's a subcategory of that religion. So if you're a, a, a Christian, there's four, there's, you know, there's categories of what kind of Christian are you? What kind of Catholic are you? What kind of Buddhist are you? You know, there's denominations of that. So there's just like, to me, it, it, to me, it's, it's something that I respect, that I, that I look at, I respect it all, you know, and I, I think maybe I may, may be mistaken. Maybe you looked at me as a religious person because of what I do, because that's just gen generally speaking, exactly, generally speaking, if you're good and you do what you do, you must be religious, right? See, you're not in your head. And that's a misconception, you know? It's a misconception. Exactly. And, exactly. and it's, it's nothing again, it's what society in this world has taught us. Society in this world mm -hmm. has said, ah, oh, if you're good, then you must be religious. If you're bad, then you must not, you know? The, the, anyways, that's a whole entire <laughs> different segment that we could be doing. But, uh, go on, Erdi. Uh -huh. I'm all yours. Uh -huh. uh, Grant, what about um, trivial things? And uh, what do you like for breakfast? And, um, uh -huh. What is your um, well, casual um, common? Uh, okay, so thing? for breakfast, I'm not really a breakfast person here in China. Um, they, the, I love Chinese food. Don't get me wrong. The one thing I can't get get through is I can't do Chinese breakfast. It doesn't make any sense to me. But I love, you know, the Western kind of breakfasts. I love the bread, the egg, the the sausage, bacon, uh, mm. English muffins, almonds. You know, those are the dishes that I miss the most. And uh, I should start having breakfast more often. Then it's easy for me to get some stuff to kind of make it Americanized. I can get some sausage, kind of make a little bit of a breakfast, you know, toast, bread. Eggs Benedict is like the best. 
Mm-hmm. And I don't know um, in Russia what kind of breakfast foods are centric, if it's more of the Asian foods or if it's more Westernized foods or if it's a little bit of both or if it's going to be something completely different. Oh, but what is a breakfast dish in Russia? Oh, it's, uh, it relates to, um, or how to say, um, of nationality, Age? region, region. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> it's different because we have uh, different traditions for example um, <clears throat> I like porridge uh, uh, for breakfast okay porridge yeah uh, I cook porridge every day but <clears throat> I used to eat um, for breakfast even meat and uh, even fried meat but when I was young but now I changed my Mm, uh, I change my mm, how to say routine, daily routine, and uh, right now it's uh, simple, simple um, food mm-hmm, like porridge to make mm, my stomach works properly and not mm, ages ages uh, tells us how to live, <laughs> what to eat. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, porridge to me is more of a like a lunch or a dinner. Um, but there's something called oatmeal. Oatmeal is really good. Mm-hmm. I like oatmeal, oatmeal, cereal, those kinds uh, of dishes. Uh-huh. So mm-hmm. very, very Americanized, I guess you can say. Uh, e- England breakfast, uh, American breakfast, probably Australia, New Zealand, those types of dishes very westernized kinds of dishes of breakfast. But for lunch and dinner, I, I can have dumplings or balls uh, or I can have noodles, you know, I can have a lot of Chinese. I, I could try anything new. Just breakfast, I can't get accustomed to something new. Like to me, the breakfast in China is what you would have for lunch or dinner. Uh, you know, I can't it, get... it means uh, that uh, with your moving to China, you didn't change your habits, uh, food habits. Mm. Breakfast, I did not change. Lunch and a dinner, I, I customize myself to. I sometimes will order, and I got an app to order. I got to stop ordering, though. It's giving me too much quarantine weight. <laughs> mm. But... Uh... <laughs> if you understand. Uh, China, China uh, includes really um, rich uh, cuisine, and uh, there are a lot of foods. And what is your uh, the weirdest <laughs> food in China? The weirdest food I've ever tasted or I've ever had. Um, I'm afraid that I've already eaten it. I, I get this. I get this um, chicken on the street. And I'm thinking I'm eating chicken feet, but I'm not sure. Actually, I don't want to know what it is because I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. But if I find out what it is, I probably won't want to eat it. So <laughs> I, I think I eat chicken feet. Or it, they're just like, like these chicken strips, right? But I just I don't know what they are. They just taste really good. Um, but there's, there's octopus. I tried octopus. Octopus. No, I haven't. I, didn't, I know they have it, but I'll never try it. Mm. I think if your question is, is what's the strangest food I've ever tasted? My answer is I probably will never taste any strange food. There's this egg called the thousand year old egg. I will never taste it. It just, it makes me want to gag. I will never taste it. It's called like the the hundred year egg or the thousand year egg. It's black. Yeah, it's looking looking really strange. (laughs) Yeah, I I think... um, I'll, I'll never want to taste it. Uh, I think it's called about, a thousand year old. What, what egg. about fried insects? Mm-hmm. No, I'll never taste Not, that stuff. No, no. but uh, uh, actually, no. Uh, I would like to uh, to try it. <laughs> I always mm, when I mm, watch uh, some mm, broadcast on TV Did I try about it one time. No. Mm-hmm. Scorpions. Yeah, like uh, scorpions, fried scorpions. <laughs> yeah, I just I can't. Mm-hmm. 
I, I can't. Um, I, I don't think I could. But it just looks. Uh, the way I, I'll I'll send you a photo on on Zoom here. But the thousand year old egg is just just. Bleh. Just don't want to taste what, it. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what about walking? Mm -hmm. What about walking? Do you walk every day? And do you? Uh, I should be walking every day, but I don't. <laughs> uh, I, I want. I want to start that habit. I want to start that habit. I think I'm making it a birthday habit. I guess. Uh, I guess there are some parks. Um, Grant, oh, so sorry. I can't hear you. Uh, oh, can you hear me now? Uh, your picture. Oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, that's good again. Uh, yeah, that's good again. Uh -huh. Can okay. you hear me? Um, yeah, I can hear uh -huh. you. I can okay. hear you. Okay, continue, can please. You. Continue, please. Um, yeah, there's parks around China, um, and I um, I should be getting out more often. At least getting out at least an hour a day will be good. At least getting me some fresh air. I was actually thinking of taking you outside with me, but I wasn't sure how well the connection would be and how attentive I would be in the conversation as I was walking. I think going outside would be too disruptive and too distracting. So I, I decided against it, but probably... I'll probably go, maybe I'll go out this afternoon because there's a restaurant I'll probably go to for lunch mm -hmm. after we're done talking, which is, there's no rush. Don't, don't feel rushed. Um, and I'll go, I'll have lunch there. And what I'll do is after I eat, I'll take a longer walk back. I'll, look, I'll, go, around, I'll go around the block mm -hmm. to, uh, to, um, to do a longer walk. To go back uh, uh, how do you move around the city? Um, well, my work is literally across the street and I'll either take the bus or I'll take a DD. Right now, I'm kind of um, ca cautious about the, the coronavirus, the mm -hmm. COVID. So I don't want to um, take the bus, really. I'm mm -hmm. just like, mm -hmm. like. Because there's still there's people who are going around without a mask who are sneezing and coughing and mm. I'm just like kind of freakish about that. Mm. I went out for a walk one evening and people were just so close to each other. I was just trying to stay my ah. distance and mm. people are already outside. I think it's too maybe it's me freaking especially out especially when people are out too. Especially when China is really overcrowded place and <laughs> so small. Yeah, I, d I just between. didn't want to be close. Yeah, I didn't want to be close to to all those people. I ended up only walking a little bit that one night, and I went back right away because I was like, "Nope, I'm not going to do that." Uh, <laughs> because it was just everyone was just as together, I, and it just, but as I heard that. Um, it is uh, uh, the situation of corona uh, reducing. Mm. Uh, well, um. a lot of cities have opened back up and uh, the schools are open. The senior high mm. and lower senior high or whatever they call it. I would say like I think grades 11 and 12 and grades uh, – 9, 10, and 11, sorry, 11 and 12, and then um, grades like 7, 8, and 9 have opened up. So I think that group has opened up in some cities, uh, but in my city, they're projected to open up May 29th for the upper high school because they'll have their examination next month, and then uh, the other schools will open maybe a couple weeks later followed by the other grades as well. So mm -hmm. the upper middle, like four, five, and six will open, and then grades one through three will open, and then um, then the kindergartens will open, and then the training schools will open. So, yep, that's a thousand-year-old egg. <laughs> wow, it's looking big. You want to try that? <laughs> 
<laughs> no. You want to no, try that? Or? No, I don't want to try it. It's really. Yeah, you know. me neither. Yeah, like I said, I, like, oh, try it. You're in China. You've been in there. I said, nope, never. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> uh, but uh, people like it, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. know who, but if they cook it, uh, that means uh, some I likes guess it. I it's cooked <laughs> right, you know. Mm -hmm. Grand. Or maybe they're called the hundred year old uh -huh. eggs or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, um, continue uh, with your. What about uh, <laughs> uh, bicycles? Um, it is easy to use bicycle in your city. It is. Actually, there are a lot of bicycles everywhere. I'm just mm -hmm. afraid to ride one in the streets of China. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I prefer just to walk. Yeah, of course, so, of but course. All right. The now way the it's traffic dangerous. is, it's just too crazy. It's just too crazy to ride a bike in China. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get hit, you know. And um, I've thought about getting one of those motor scooters, but it's like, no. I actually can actually get a license to drive, but again, I don't want to drive. I don't want. I don't want to drive with people on the road who don't know how to drive. I'm comfortable in my own city, my own state, my own country to drive there, you know. Okay. So. Grant, thank you so much. Um, take care about yourself. And uh, in conclusion, what would you say to our students to practice English, to improve their skills? And um, I think I've said this a lot. There's a phrase called, if you don't use it, you lose it. So, you know, even though you're practicing with your teacher and you're practicing with your friends, try to use it in a real life scenario. You know, for example, you're in Russia. English is a second language, I believe, right? It's the second common language spoken in Russia. No, no. Right? Uh, English is oh. not popular. Where does English rank? Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, popular. so it's not even popular. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so in your case, I would say, I'm a, I must i do not know, you're in Moscow. So, are there any foreign shops, like any shops where they speak English? Uh, or would I be stuck? Uh, I would no, be no. Stuck. It's uh, no one knows in the shops and in bus and uh, okay, every okay. place. And, mm -hmm. So for your situation, it'd be a little bit tricky, but I would say if you're going to use English, find Russian friends or find friends to use it with and make the conversation short and simple. Talk about your day, talk about your family, talk about food, you know. I mean, if you're going to talk about something that's going to be lengthy, it's going to be very difficult to use English. But if it's simple topics like your hobbies or, hey, let's go out for drinks or, hey, let's go out to dinner, how's your family, blah, 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 blah. You know, like I would say that, you know, try to find some friends to speak it with. If you don't use it, you lose it. And another thing I wanted to kind of add on from our conversation on Saturday is that you mentioned my goal, right? So to branch off my goal, like I'm really hoping that this web talk thing takes off because if this web talk takes off the way I'm hoping it takes off, I won't really have to, I won't ever have to worry about asking for money because everything will come back in the way it's supposed to with the, with the, engagement and the circle that we we are growing you know with our circle that we're growing it's going to be huge i'm hoping if it goes the way i'm hoping it's going to go i'll never have to worry about it again and on top of that the web the web talk the kids of web talk will get bigger we'll be able to recruit more teachers i won't be mm -hmm. the only care key, caretaker of them <laughs> i feel like i yeah. am mm -hmm. Um, but there'll be other teachers that will be able to branch off and they'll see what WebTalk has done for me, 
for Teacher John, for Teacher Arsh, for the other teachers of Web Talk. They'll see how everything is being generated and they'll see how the income is matching what they would charge originally charge, you know. <laughs> so the idea that I'm hoping that Web Talk and our circle will be able to show the teachers of Web Talk is that what do you want to charge for a class? Oh, I want to charge 20 bucks. Well, here's what I'm making every month. And if I'm making X amount and more than they're wanting to charge, they're going to see, oh, so this is all I got to do. I got to engage. I got to create posts and I got to teach my classes and I'm going to make exactly what I want to make. You know, they want to make, 20 a class, $20 a class, $30 a class, $10 a class, whatever it is they want to make. That's the goal that I'm hoping WebTalk can show them. And with whom I'm looking forward to and, and, and trusting in the process, I'm hoping that it's going to show that, you know, mm -hmm. it's not going to show overnight. It's not going to show next month or even the month after mm -hmm. i project rolling the dice that it's going to start to show <clears throat> probably the 10th month or so you know mm -hmm. october or so is what i'm hoping to see something by <clears throat> i'm going to be going back eventually to my kindergarten in my time i'm going to still try to do my i'm going to still be able to do my classes I'm just not, I want to make sure I can still try to engage. I'm just going to be all over my head. I'm going to be doing, carrying too many things in one basket. So I got to slow myself down and trust the process, you know, and hopefully everything will come in the terms into light. Thank you so, so. much. Mm, so interesting to talk to you. And, but I hope, uh, of course, we will meet, um, in future not once we will create a lot of uh, videos together and um, i Definitely. highly i highly recommend to everybody um, to follow teach grant uh, subscribe to his channel and attend his lessons bring your children to his classes and um, your children and you as well will be fluent soon your English will be naturally growing up and um, teacher grant is uh, really um, uh, very helpful mm -hmm. thanks a lot thanks so much thank you mm -hmm. and Erdi one more thing um, you've kind of given me an inspirational idea I love what you're doing with your videos how you're taking time to find individuals to do kind of like a one on one interview. And it's kind of inspired me to kind of, unless you've kind of already are doing it as well, but to find like the kids of Web Talk, yeah. like who's a child of the week, mm -hmm. and have me interview them or you interview them or whatever, both of us, and highlight a child of the week or of the, maybe not of the week, of the day, a day would be too many, but maybe a child of the week. I can pick one child every week that's been in my classes, interview them, ask them questions, kind of like what you're doing, your dreams, your passions, what do you believe, uh, what do you think, blah, blah, blah. And to take that and just make a segment in my channel, your channel combined, of the web talk, uh, ki you know, kids of, the, the kids of web talk playlist. So I shoot, you know, I go through every list. And eventually, I'll get through all 20 of them. You know, I'll probably, what I'll do is I'll probably interview all the children at once, mm -hmm. not at once, but do them as, mu as many as I can in a week. And then I'll segment it to every week. I'll, I'll post the video. Mm -hmm. So if I can get through like 10 children in one week, interview them. And then every video I'll post once a week or something like that. Like have a segment called the child web talk, kids of web talk. The web talk star of the week you know kid, a web talk kids star or something like that oh. but you kind of inspired this idea like wow i love what you're doing you're taking these web talk teachers and web talk entrepreneurs and asking them questions and 
you know, why not do a segment for kids and, and I have it exclusive. Wonderful, wonderful. So, mm -hmm. you know, and I love how you inspire that idea, uh, Erdi. Thank you. Actually, uh, I always mm, watch your mm, lessons with children with great uh, pleasure. And so it is. it would be very interesting to watch, for example, um, interview, your interview, with uh, team with Tom <laughs> and Jackie <laughs> and so yeah Tom exactly. and Jackie mm -hmm. and like even Sophia and even taking the youngsters who are six even to ask them yeah. simple questions like oh what's mm -hmm. your favorite animal mm -hmm. why you know just to kind of you know whether they're as old as Tom being 14 he's probably can, mm -hmm. he could talk a lot I'm sure or as actually, young as a um, as young actually as a, I invited, I invited Tom, but uh, he he promised, but <laughs> he didn't come. <laughs> I'll, I'll influence him to to uh, to do it for you, or the both of us, or just for you, for that matter. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think didn't you get? Did you get um, James? James? Mm, not, not yet. Ja not yet. I'm. Sh I definitely would do James and Jackie. Mm -hmm. You know they'll be more. They'll be able to talk more for you, um, but I, you know, I like that you're doing this, and that kind of has inspired me to, to again, I'm taking off more than I can chew, but to do this, do this segment, and just interview them one on one, or one on four, or something like that. But one on one, I think it's more, more uh, inclusive, more. Um, what's the word? There's an English word I'm looking for. More. I'll think about it later. But I don't want to make myself more embarrassed than I am if I'm not thinking of the word. But it's a word of making it feel more inclusive, more um, more connected. One -on -one. There's a word for more it. engagement. Yes, there you go. Yeah. It's more engaging, more connection. But there's still another word I'm looking for, but I can't think about it. And here I am, an English teacher. <laughs> hey, you guys, even English teachers can't think of the right English word. But it's a uh, personal. There you go. It's more personal. 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 Personable, personal. Because if you have a group of eight, you're not as personal to them as you are when you're one on one. So that's the word I was looking for. But you're right, engaging. Your words are perfect too, or the engaging, mm -hmm. uh, compassion. Anyways, yes. So thank you so much, Erdi. Thanks that for you. I am really, well. uh, I am really happy. You've made my day. My day is already <laughs> started with great. great joy. Thanks so much, Titi. Mm -hmm. Oh, my pleasure. Okay. You have yourself a wonderful rest of your day. Happy Monday. Four more days till Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bye. See you. All right. Bye bye, Erdi. Take best care. Wish. See you. Yeah.